they did the job. Liverpool only have one one thing to be unhappy about. Should have been four or five. It should have been either a standard low application or it should have really gone for a second session. I think you, what we saw was what we, we predicted that this was the this would have been the, the tie that would be easiest to predict because FC Porto are oh, they're probably probably arguably the weakest team out of the eight remaining teams in this competition. Um, uh, maybe you can roll in United, but I mean, um, you just saw Liverpool's superiority over FC Porto, and I think for FC Porto, they say to themselves that this is actually an all right result. I still think that Liverpool are going to are going to score away goals, but I think if this was if this was a lubrication forfeit to the second leg. At 2-0, FC Ports have like a 2% chance. Like it's it, it, a minimal chance, but it's still nothing. But I think for FC Ports, I'll say, okay, look, it could have been worse. Because I think FC Port, like the way the game was going, the chances that Liverpool missed, I think Porto thought they'd be taken out to, to, to launch with that um, Liverpool, Liverpool pain. But at the end of the day, I think what Liverpool saw is that, all right, we know that we are better than these guys. We know that we can open these guys up. We know that we are the better team. We've got the better personnel. We can go to Portugal, get one or two away goals, and just pretty much um, ease this through. But I think we have to start with Naby Keita. Um, I did say that Klopp should have rolled with Shakiri because I'm a big Naby Keita fan, and I, I still think that's for Naby Keita. See, the thing about Naby Keita is this is that people keep saying, oh, wait, why do they keep defending him? His flops, he's a big flop, he's a big flop. I know a brick when I see one. <clears throat> and I know a technically good player when I see one. Naby Keita is a technically good player. And from now to the end of time, hopefully beyond, I will always defend technically good players. I will always defend ballers. I'll always defend those dudes. And Naby Keita is one of those dudes that I, I, will, I will defend 100%. So when homeboy... Because again, people would say it's okay, it was a deflection and everything. He still had to be in the right place at the right time and to create that, 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 that shot. So if he wasn't in that position, if he didn't read, read the game, being in the right position to utilize that, that shot, the, the goal doesn't, it doesn't come. So he, he was a main factor in getting that goal to, to come in through. And just his overall game, you saw why he was brought in, in, into the game. I think once Naby Keita fully embeds and fits into this team, that's the missing link. That is why Liverpool fans were crying when they lost Shutinia. That is why Liverpool fans wanted so badly to um, get Nabil Fekir. That is why Liverpool fans wanted to really look at and say, well, let's just look at this whole Isco thing. They are missing that link. The, the, uh, because again, when because Liverpool played the three, you have your Wijnaldum, who just keeps things going, keeps the possession. And you have either your Henderson or if uh, Binyo, who just solidifies the main midfielder and acts as a protective tissue in front of the defence. But then, the third midfielder is the guy that connects with the front three. Because that midfielder is critical because it means that Firmino doesn't have to come back so, so deep. It means that uh, Mane and Salah don't have to come back so deep. Obviously, within the texture of a game, people aren't... Um, sticks to their rigid positions, so you would see guys go wide, guys, guys go deep. But for the large parts of the game, what Klopp wants is the front three to not come too way back to the half line to receive the ball. What they want is that guy from midfield carrying the ball to join in with the front three to form like a four attack, and he plays as the attacking midfielder and he's the guy that connects the midfield to, to the attack. So Naby Keita is very important, and I think in Naby because Naby Keita is technically the best midfielder that Liverpool have. Everyone has different skills, but technically, in an offensive sense, that's what Naby Keita brings. And I think what you saw from his through balls, his passes to Mane, like, like that really one good pass he got from Mane that Mane didn't, didn't put away. You're seeing what this guy can, can break. Um, I've got to talk about Henderson. I've got to, I've got to talk about Henderson. Um, Henderson is a brick, but he's a useful brick. Same with Giroud, same with Loris. He's a Class C brick. But the thing with Class C bricks is that they're just they're essentially, because that's what your answer says, doesn't, there are times when these guys have seen, you know what, let's not even mention the word brick. Let's just give, give him his flowers. That was a quality ball that, that Henderson played him through. That was a, a quality ball. 
because he read the defense beautifully well. He was beautifully timed. I think it was to Fabinho or someone. Ball was put across and Firmino right place, right time. You know, so for Firmino, and I think that's what Firmino does really well. Like he, he is very good at reading the game. That's why a lot of the goals that Firmino scores are tapping. You can say it's only a tapping, but in order to create a tapping, you have to have excellent movement and you have to have excellent reading of the game and you have to have great anticipation, which is what your boy Fair Firmino had. But Henderson had a quality game because he worked hard, defensively strong, passed the ball well. And was and was also very good on the ball and, and used the ball very well. So I was very impressed with what Henderson did. And I think, you know, I think Klopp would be happy that, you know what, yeah, Henderson maybe showed a few haters, you know, like a few people that, you know what, I am more than just, you know, some some side man. Um, I thought that, you know, Salah, that chance that Salah had, he could have put, put it away. I think if he had paused for a few minutes, or for sorry, for a few seconds, he actually had enough time to take the ball around. Cassius, but I think he, he he snapped it too quickly and then he just missed by a few inches. But he had enough time to set himself up, either dink it over Cassius, wait till Cassius come, dink it over Cassius, or maybe move the ball around Cassius. But see, Porto were all right. I think Porto are just the inferior team, but they were all right. But in these games, man, when that chance comes, you've got to take it. Marega had the, the chance. Now, I believe he's right footed, so it was his, his left foot, but still, that's no excuse. I think one on one, you can see the whites of. Um, Allison's eyes, you've got to put that ball away. You've got to put that ball away. Very good save from Allison. He stood up, he was under a lot of pressure, made a, a quality save, but I think I would expect a top tier striker, even on his weaker foot, to at least do better with that ball, but really to put that ball away because that was a humongous chance. Because if Marega scores that, that changes the whole complexion of the time. Because if we're now going into Portugal 2 1, it changes things very, very, very briefly. But just off, you know, for Liverpool as a whole, I just thought they. Um, the injury to Ryan Robertson was not that much of an issue. I thought Milner slotted in very well. Alexander Arnold did this thing very well. And look, man, let's just talk about Lovren. You see, it's very difficult because I thought Lovren had a, a strong game. He had a real strong game. But again, how good is the opposition? So you can say that he had a very strong game. And you can say, oh, no, he had a good game. So why don't we use him in the better teams? No, I think Joe, once Joe Gomez is fully fit, he has to come back. You know, I think, you see... If Joe Gomez was back to training, I would have played him in this game. Because I would have played him in this game, get him into match fit, and then put him in the Chelsea game. It's I think it's quite a risk. Because that's because Kepner has a big decision to make. Lovren, decent game. Do you trust him against Chelsea? Do you then put him Matip? Joe Gomez, his first game back. Do you now put him in his first game back against Chelsea, which is going to be an extremely important game? Just Liverpool's toughest game for, for, for the rest of the season, so that's a, that's, a, that's a, a tough decision that um thing he has to to, to make, you know. Um, I thought you know, Manny decent did his thing, it wasn't really what it was, really, it was not his really his best game. Um, but I think overall, I tend to think about for Liverpool, they could have scored a lot more, more goals. I think there were more goals in the game because I was watching this as the same time I was watching the um Tottenham game, but every time I was looking at the game. It was actually a pre like both games were actually played really well. It was actually played at really fast pace. And I think for Porto, I just think that in the final third, there was not enough individual quality. So they're just looking for the right pass. But against such a strong defensive team as Liverpool, who are very hard to to, 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 to score against, I think Porto's lack of any individual with, with good individual quality it was hard because whenever you come against it's often like that. You need an individual to do something. You need someone to 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 dribble, to take me on, beat one, two, three men to create some space. Because that ball was was was, was gonna, gonna come in. That killer pass was not gonna happen based on how Liverpool were set up. But I think for Liverpool, they're in a very strong position on going into the second leg. And um like I see Liverpool scoring away goals. Not just one, I still haven't scoring away goals in the second leg. And um, but so yeah, like it was the only thing that Klopp would say is clinical, clinical, clinical. They should have really put these they, they, these guys away a lot earlier. Um, but yeah, but 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 yeah. But look, man, for now, Naby Keita, I am happy. I am happy that he got that goal, and it was a crucial goal, and it was the first goal that really set the tone because he is going to be put. I don't think Shakiri has. Shakiri is good. He just doesn't have the skill set that Naby Keita has. And um, whether it's Wijnaldum, whether it's uh, Henderson, Fa um, Fabinho, these guys just don't, are not as technically good in an offensive sense as Naby Keita. Because if you have a guy who can create, because remember, a lot of the creativity of the front three 
sometimes relies upon them and they're not really getting any creativity from the midfield. But it drastically changes Liverpool's setup and it increases the chance creation if you have a midfielder who can play a through ball, who can create, who can supply, who can find the right pass and has the ability to play the through ball on the ground, the ball over the, the top of the, of the little deck. So if Naby Keita can just be, get in those positions to read the runs of Firmino, read the runs of um, Salah, read the runs of Mane, you have guys who have, especially in Mane and Salah, who have the speed to get into those through balls, to have the movement and the intelligence to make those intelligence passes. So if Keita can just really get in his bag and get those balls coming through, because I think that's Liverpool. If, imagine if Keita really fits into this team and he really was so supplying them. A lot of the games that Liverpool draw, drew, they would have won. Because what they are missing is a playmaker. Liverpool don't have a playmaker. So it's actually credit to Liverpool that they've actually got into, into this position without a genuine playmaker. Eriksen is a playmaker. David Silva is a is a playmaker. A lot of these other teams have playmakers. Your, your, your boy Zad is a playmaker. Liverpool do not have do, have not had a consistent creator. So if they have that consistent creator, which I believe Naby Keita is, just that he just needs to he just needs to they it's, it's about an understanding, man. You know, for, for football, it's about, about being on that wavelength. Things happen so quickly that you can't think. And I keep on saying this, and that's why I keep on drumming this down, which is what this whole analysis is about, which is why I'm trying to educate you guys. One touch football. <clears throat> Defenses pray for footballers whenever they have the ball to have one, two, three seconds on the ball because it gives them time to now anticipate what you're, what you're going to do. It's almost impossible to defend one touch football because it's happening so quickly. So you don't even have enough time to react to where you're going because it's like boom, 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 boom. And the only way you get one touch football is if you have that telepathic understanding with the other players. So if Naby Keita can forge a telepathic understanding with Firmino, Salah and Mane, Liverpool become extremely dangerous. Thanks for watching the video. Now think about becoming a football hot patron by pledging an amount each month and then gain access to exclusive content only on the football hot patron page. Peace. Head over to the official site at halffootballhot.com or just click over here.